Before we get on with this case, disclaimers are a must. This is a true crime, it involves real people, and then real people have real families. So I do want you to comment and I do want you to share, but please be a bit sensitive as you do so. On the 19th of December in the year 2000, 30 year old John O'Dell, PC John O'Dell, of Kent Police was out on duty. He was doing routine speed checks on Shotterdain Road in Margate, Kent. He was working with six other police officers when a Vauxhall Astra appeared and the car was clearly speeding. PC John O'Dell pointed his radar gun at the car to gauge its speed. He signalled for the speeding car to stop or slow down, but he was hit by the car at 52 miles per hour. It threw him against the windscreen and dragged him down the road. As a result, he suffered head injuries, broken arms, broken legs, and in hospital four hours later, PC John O'Dell died from internal bleeding. The person driving the car that day was 25 year old career criminal Wayne Rule. And it turned out that while he was driving that day, he was already on his fourth driving ban. He shouldn't have even been behind the wheel. In 2001, Maidstone Crown Court was told that Wayne Rule had two passengers in the car that day. And just before that he crashed into a police officer, he shouted, shall I go for it? That's when he accelerated and tried to swerve PC Odell. The court heard that Wayne Rule had convictions going back to 1992. These included taking a vehicle, drink driving, driving without license, driving without insurance, a fray, assault, criminal damage, burglary, assault on police, and abusive behavior. He pled guilty to the manslaughter charge. He was sentenced to nine years and a 15 year driving ban. Then in May 2006, Wayne Rule was released from prison. At some point between then and 2019, Wayne Rule moved to Spalding in Lincolnshire. That's 180 miles away from Margate in Kent. 11 years after he got out of prison, he was sentenced to another 30 month driving ban for driving while he was disqualified. Then in August 2019, the Murray newspaper got images of Wayne Rule driving once again. Let's bear in mind he's disqualified. So he's got no license, he's got no insurance. The car, in fact, the car was sawn off road. So that meant that weren't taxed, that weren't insured, and there's a chance that it weren't even MOT'd. Wayne's now 43 year old, and he intended on denying all charges, but his legal representatives said, look Wayne, they've got pictures of you inside the car. It's quite evidently you, we need to plead guilty. So in Boston Magistrates Court on the 22nd of November, 2019, that's exactly what he did. However, his defense said, look, Wayne has got chronic back pain and on the two days that he was caught driving, he was on his way to get some medication. Now, let's just hold on there a second. The two days he was caught driving was the 30th and 31st of August. That's some extreme medication if you have to go and collect it twice in two days. Irregardless of any defense, the magistrate court sent him back to prison for six months and gave him an additional 30 month driving ban. Let's bear in mind, since he got out of prison, this was his fifth driving offence while driving on a driving ban. So let's do another jump in time. It's now Friday the 17th of December 2021, and this was when the police raided Wayne's flat. At this point in Wayne's life, it's a complete mess. To the extent his partners left him, and he hadn't had any access to his children since she left earlier that year. The reason the police were raiding his flat was in the search for drugs. Now, they did find some, how much, I'm not sure. And it's believed that Wayne thought that his two friends, Darren Kirk and Mark Stone, had grasped on him, and that's where he got raided. So just a few nights later, shortly after midnight on Monday the 20th of December 2021, Wayne went to 20A Bodwich Road in Spalding. This was the home address of Mark Stone. Mark was inside. He was in bed, fast asleep. Then all of a sudden, Wayne that had broke in came bursting in with two knives, one in each hand. In one hand, he had a 10 inch carving knife and in the other hand, a slightly smaller knife. Wayne then launched at Mark, stabbing him 10 times across the face, neck, shoulders, back, upper left arm and right arm. As Mark's frantically trying to deflect these blows, Wayne's just powering through. He's bloodthirsty and he's furious and he's trying to stab Mark to his chest. What are you doing? We're friends. In response, Wayne said, you've ruined my life. Now, Mark Stone, who is currently trying to fight for his life and do his best to survive, didn't have a clue what Wayne were on about. So he starts to plead with him. Don't kill me, Wayne. 
I love you. But you can't reason with an angry person, especially when they're wielding two knives. At this point, Wayne's like growling, and as he talks and grunts, the spit's flying out of his mouth. Mark could tell that Wayne were desperately trying to stab him in the chest. He knew that he was trying to kill him. The final of the stabs were to Mark's left side. It was at that point that Mark heard a popping noise and a whooshing sound. It was like a tire had been punctured, and he could feel air coming from his lungs. Certain that he was about to die, he said, You've killed me now. That's the one that's done me. Wayne replied, saying, That's what I came here for, you fucking idiot. Now where's the drugs and the money? He then opened the cabinet and got a small tub. Inside was about 15 to 20 pounds worth of heroin. He took it with him and left. And as he did, he stopped outside of a neighbor's door and shouted, You ain't seen nothing. I assume it was Mark that called the ambulance. Either which way, when they got there, they alerted the police. And that was about 26 minutes past 12 in the morning. When the police got there, Mark told the police Wayne was his attacker. Mark Stone had been stabbed 12 times. He was attended to by paramedics and taken to the hospital for life-saving treatment. The whooshing sound that Mark said he could hear and the feeling of air coming out was because his lung had been punctured. He suffered major blood loss requiring two blood transfusions and two chest drains. His condition had deteriorated even more, requiring intubation and medical ventilation. He was in intensive care for six days, but after the night that he was attacked, the next thing that he could remember was waking up in hospital on Christmas Day. Unfortunately, that's only part of what happened on the early hours of Monday the 20th of December 2021. You'll remember that I mentioned another name, Darren Kirk. 52-year-old Darren, who had a daughter, lived at 2 Signant Court in Spalding with his partner. They lived in flat number 1, and this was the same building that Wayne lived in, but he lived in flat number 3. At 10 past 1 in the morning, police officers arrived at flat number 1, and when they did, they found Darren laying naked on the kitchen floor. First aid was administered, but Darren Kirk was pronounced dead just 45 minutes after he'd been attacked. A knife was found in the hallway, it was covered in blood and bent out of shape. I should also point out here that this was a different knife than the ones that Wayne had used on Mark. The ones that Wayne had used on Mark had been found near the scene at Mark's house, both still having Mark's DNA on them. Darren Kirk's partner, Sam, told the police what had happened. She said that she was at home with Darren when they heard a banging at the front door. So Darren went to the door and she followed. It was Wayne that was banging on the door, it seemed like he might have had something up his sleeve, but it weren't all that obvious. Wayne guided them into the kitchen, and as he did so, he said Mia Rock has gone over, which Sam took to mean that she'd overdosed. Once in the kitchen, Wayne pulled out a knife and made three upward stabbing motions to Darren Kirk's chest. Blood went everywhere, and Darren fell to the ground. But that weren't enough for Wayne. He was still angry and bloodthirsty. He crouched over Darren and stabbed down three times into his back. He then got up and left. Now let's bear in mind, this is what Sam's telling the police while they're in the flat after this has just happened. So the officers then go upstairs to Wayne's flat. When they got to Wayne's flat, he shouted out threats that he'd shoot a police officer and he said that he wanted a negotiator. The police contained the area and the police negotiator arrived. Now during this time while all this has been put in place, Darren shouts out the window to the police guarding the back of the flats and he asked whether Darren was dead. He also shouted out some more threats to shoot the first cop through the door. So as you'd expect, armed officers arrived on scene. Wayne's response to this was to tell them that, look, I've killed a police officer before, and you should know I've got a shotgun in my flat. Adding that he would kill another police officer if anyone tried to force entry into his flat. Eventually, a trained hostage negotiator arrived, and at around 7 a.m., Wayne surrendered. After being told that he was under arrest for murder and attempted murder, his response was to ask which one is dead. He was then taken to Grantham Police Station. There was no shotgun found in his possession, nor in his flat. In the police interviews, he answered most of the questions with no comment. However, he did say that he didn't agree with Sam's account of what happened, and he called her a liar. When he was asked why he went round to Darren Kirk's flat, he said, Six years of fucking torture. That's what drives me to go around there. And I didn't go around to hurt them. In a subsequent interview, later on the same day, he answered no comment to questions about his mental health, and he told the police that the drugs found in his flat weren't his. He said that he'd been holding them for somebody, and he owed them money for the drugs. 
He also denied that he'd been to Matt Stone's address earlier that night. Which is a bit strange to say that when he was first arrested, he asked which one were dead. Now, before we move on to the sentencing, let's have a quick look at the effects of that night. Obviously, Darren Kirk lost his life. His daughter has lost her dad. And not only did Sam lose a partner, but she obviously witnessed the attack on Darren. I don't think I can imagine how haunting that must be. The judge said she had to watch Mr. Kirk being killed by you and had to listen to him asking for help, which she could not give him because you told her that you'd kill her too. Then there's Mark Stone. He was fast asleep in his own bed in his own home when Wayne had broke in and then lunged at him with two knives, attacking him severely. Imagine the effects that must have. I can't imagine anything worse than not feeling safe in your own bed in your own house. Mark said that him and Wayne were both from Kent, they both had drug problems, and they'd both been to prison. So with all that in the past, him and Wayne got on quite well. I felt shock and horror as Wayne started to stab me. I've never been so scared in my life. I was fast asleep when Wayne attacked me, and now I cannot sleep until I am totally exhausted. He said he can remember everything from that night in excruciating detail, but he still can't figure out why Wayne attacked him. On Wednesday the 4th of January, 2023 at Lincoln Crown Court, Wayne Rule pled guilty to the murder of Darren Kirk and the attempted murder of Mark Stone. On the 17th of March 2023 at Lincoln Crown Court, the judge determined the case didn't suit a whole life order. Now, the judge did emphasise something that I want to read out because in the last video or one a few weeks ago, people started to misunderstand the minimum term. So here's what the judge said. It is important to emphasise, so that you and the public can understand the position, that a minimum term is not the same as an ordinary sentence of imprisonment, where a defendant will normally serve only half or two thirds of that sentence before being released on licence. A minimum term is a term that must be served before your case may be referred to the parole board for a consideration of your release upon licence. It means the actual length of time that you will spend in prison before the process can take place. With a whole life sentence out of the question, the judge set the starting point at 30 years. The aggregating factors for the murder charge were the location of Darren's murder, being in Darren's home. The fact that Sam was there to witness it, again in her own home. Premeditation weren't added as an aggravating factor, which quite confused me because the judge did say it were premeditated, but it didn't entail a significant degree of planning or premeditation. I completely disagree with that i think it should have been an aggravating factor but i'm not the judge revenge was also ruled out as a motive which means that weren't an aggravating factor and that the judge basically said that he did think the motive was revenge but it couldn't really be proven so therefore it weren't an aggravating factor the only mitigating factor for the murder charge was the fact that he pled guilty the aggregating factors for the attempted murder were the premeditation I don't understand, don't ask. Wayne's previous record, which included 21 convictions for 71 offences. The location which it happened, which were Mark's own home, and the brutality of the attack. Again, revenge was not added as a factor. The mitigating factors were the guilty plea, which apparently shows remorse. And although there were no psychiatric evidence, the judge appreciated that Wayne had been having problems with drugs, his partner had left him, he hadn't seen his kids, he was having mental health problems, so that were put in as a mitigating factor as well. And then like additionally it's another mitigating factor but it's kind of co-joined to that but Wayne felt like he was at breaking point and his life were in tatters. For the murder of Darren Kirk, Wayne Rule was sentenced to a life imprisonment with a minimum of 35 years. For the attempted murder of Mark Stone, Wayne Rule was sentenced to a concurrent life sentence of 14 years that is all the information i've got for you i am really sorry i know i miss out a bit of background information about the victims but this isn't a story that's very well reported so it's quite hard to find that out and i don't really like contacting family members i don't like that vulturous feeling of being the media i am also very sorry if my speech is a little bit slurred in this one i'm really tired i've got really bad pains um but i've tried i'm also very late as well so I've tried to get a video out for you. Um, that's not why the research is done. Seriously, I have looked. But this case has been really hard to research. I hope you're all well and I shall see you next week.